2017's It Comes at Night. I'm Joe. I'm Ethan, and one of us is going to love it, one of us is going to hate it. Let the coin decide their fate. I hate it. I love it. Hey guys, don't like get let paranoia paranoia get the best of you because just all out front, there are spoilers ahead. Don't murder all of us. This film currently holds an 86% on RottenTomatoes.com, which makes it certified fresh. Ethan, since you hate this movie, this first question comes for, to you. Uh, Dave White of The Rap says, It's not a sexy apocalypse with the disease that transforms everyone into really cool zombies. It's just death. And it's not an easily managed doomsday prepper scenario solved by bulk foods from Jim Backer, Backer infomercials. It's just doom. <laughs> so my question for you is, how do you think the minimalist survivalist plot actually worked for the film? You have one minute. <laughs> I'm so okay. bummed that this disease didn't turn everybody into sexy, sexy zombies. No, this is a positive review. It's just very straightforward and accurate. Joe, please stop interrupting. Ethan, you have one minute. Yeah, this movie's basically contagion, except it focuses on the people that are in the woods instead of actually in the city. And so, you know, you don't get to see the CDC react to all of this. Instead, you get to see the aftermath of some people holding up in a house and putting plywood all over their windows. And I think that that works to the disadvantage of this because I think that uh, some sort of prepper scenario could work really well for this. I don't understand why the reviewer says you can't go to Bulk Foods and or Whole Foods buy bulk. Go to Costco, buy some Bulk Foods, stock up get a whole shitload of stuff in your pantry. That house had like 18 rooms in it. I don't understand why they couldn't have filled up nine of those with water jugs. And even so, they had a water filtration system. Like, they were clearly ready. And so to have, you know, people all out and about that are trying to survive and willing to kill each other all walking dead style, like, when those people interact, yeah, Joel Edgerton is right. He should have just shot the guy. Everybody that comes to that door needs to just be shot because that's the way you survive. And so this movie, by welcoming them in and bringing in the conflict this film that's where it goes wrong and that's where the believability stops. okay thank you ethan joe you have 30 seconds to respond okay so the timeline i, I don't know what ethan's thinking with the timeline because the timeline is, is well past uh people are dead there aren't people just out and about like people are sparse and the costcos and all of those like big warehouses where you can get the non-perishable foods those have all been cleaned out that's why the guy is so desperate that's why will is so desperate and trying to break into houses looking for non-perishable foods and looking for water because it's so far past that point and that's when we're seeing it. we're actually seeing humanity's deprivation at this point we're seeing people's um desperation at this point Thank you, Joe. Ethan, you have 15 seconds to respond. Yeah, but we've seen that desperation in a million movies before. I mean, this is, you know, when The Walking Dead used to be good five seasons ago. This is what Contagion should have been when it came out, showing the depravity of humanity. Like, we, we, we see we see what all of that is, but I don't understand what your problem Thanks, is. Thanks, Ethan. Joe, you have a final 15 no, to respond. I agree with you. I think it does show. All, it, it's, it's taking what The Walking Dead did. It's taking what Contagion should have done. And it's just doing it better because it's actually showing humanity and humanity crumbling. Like this movie is a shining example of where we could very possibly go to if there was a virus like okay, this. Okay, Joe, I'm sorry. I have to cut you off there. Uh, but this next question is for you. This comes from Mick LaSalle of the San Francisco Chronicle. Mick says, in the absence of such answers or the intimation of such answers or even of characters in pursuit of answers it comes at night begins to seem thin a torment without purpose so my question for you is would the film's plot have benefited from a subplot of any character at all attempting to discover what the sickness actually was you have one minute i think it would have taken away if they tried to actually delve into what the sickness was because we know what we need to know and the characters know what they need to know is that the sickness there is no cure for it and if you get the sickness you are going to die and it's very contagious so basically if a family member of yours gets the sickness they're going to die and unless you do something about it like we see in the opening scene when they when joel etcherton kills his grand or his uh, father-in-law we know that he has to do it because of how contagious it is and that's really painful and really sad and that's kind of like where the conflict is born is like that fear is breeding into a paranoia that's breeding into untrustfulness, which is breeding into this whole conflict of the movie to where you can't trust anybody. And had we actually watched like, followed Will's character and his family with his toddler and his wife, it would have been the exact same kind of movie because they didn't trust the family that invited them in. Um, so it's just this distrust of humanity when 
when they're trying to work against that. And that's what's so intriguing about this movie. Okay, thank you, Joe. Ethan, you have 30 seconds to respond. I, I get that we're supposed to focus on like the paranoia of the characters. However, I'm so focused on the bad world building of the disease itself and that, yeah, they can wear gloves and they can wear a mask and touch the dying grandfather and set his body ablaze. But however, nobody rinses anything off. Nobody sanitizes anything. Once in this movie, do they just half-ass wash their hands? We don't understand the specifics of how the disease works. So entirely, like, I'm not invested in what's going on in the movie. How contagious is this disease? Shouldn't they be more careful? I'm thinking, yeah, they actually do need to be more careful. Okay. I don't understand sorry, how any of this works. I have to cut works. you off there, Ethan. Thank you. Joe, you have 15 seconds to respond. I mean, like you said, they, they go into it. When they, when they invite Will's family in, they go into, like, this is how we try to keep ourselves safe from what could possibly be contagious. But this is also, you're thinking, this is years upon years upon years after the actual outbreak of the virus. So they're so far past Okay, thanks, Joe. I'm sorry I have to cut you off there. Ethan, you have final 15 to respond to. Timeline is not in the movie whatsoever. That's just a bullshit. Um, no, it isn't there. No, it, it, it's you not at all. Listen. It's not. Um, however, I, I'm so focused on how this disease actually works that I just skip over all of the moments of tension, all of the moments of suspense, wondering, is that paranoia? Okay, gentlemen, fear? I'm going to stop you both there, but I am going to open up the floor for discussion. You guys have four minutes to discuss back and forth and go. And so all I'm you, not afraid of anything do, that the characters to, are listen, afraid all of. you have to do is you have to pay attention. Why is Will breaking into houses where he's driven or, or traveled 80 miles to break know. into a house That's looking the thing, for stuff? Is and that, that, they can present you, Will in hint. such a, a way. No, that is a hint to tell you, oh, all of the no, all, no, of, no, all no, of the stores no, have been no, cleaned no, out. No, and no, how no, long no, is that no, going to take? No, all you have to do no, is, no, is no, take no, a, is no, pay no, attention. No, all you have to do no, is no, pay no, attention. No, 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 no. Because all you have to do is pay attention and just frame it in your mind to where like how long would it take for all the stores to be like cleaned out and there's where you get your timeline just because you were too lazy Dude. to actually put the time in to think about it does not like make it a fault of this movie it you're, makes the fault of your movie you're watching filling abilities. in holes that this movie does not provide the dirt for it we does do provide the dirt know. i just explained how i we came to my this conclusion entire movie through joel edgerton's very limited perspective we have no idea what's going on in the world outside of that those people that they kill in the woods they could have been anybody those they could have been, been fbi that, agents yeah, they could have been we don't thing. know he's what's going on outside of this world so he's when world shows up he's a history professor are doing him. his best. He's a man who studies humanity for a living and now that he's actually stuck trying to like enact humanity, he's doing his best to be the best man he can, but the paranoia is fucking with him and it is ruining him and it is taking away his integrity. Okay, okay, okay. but when Will shows up, we, the movie presents him in such a shady way like, oh, is he or isn't he? Like, we don't understand. It's because he if doesn't he's trust, actually there he doesn't trust for his Paul. family, we don't understand. Okay, I get that. He doesn't we, trust because Paul. Because that's of the, the scenario thing. that the movie establishes, we don't understand is he there actually to take advantage of this guy or is he there to actually take care of his family? Yeah, but do you we realize never at, the at any movie, point trust him. At the, yeah, at the so end we end never at any but, point but, trust like, anything no, that listen, he says so we listen. never at any point understand a goddamn thing of what's going on Ethan, in the outside world. Ethan, so Ethan. we don't have stakes beyond do we care about Joel Edgerton and no, nobody cares about Joel Edgerton. Because he's the so bad guy. So I never have suspense in the movie. In the other, in the question where I said we could have watched the movie from Will's perspective it would, and it would have been the exact same movie, I meant that because Joel Edgerton is you the bad guy. You don't know that because you don't know Will is. No, you do. Oh, you know. You do know who Will is because this movie. In this no, is this an unreliable a, narrator. No, you can't, uh, no, can't no, 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 be no, no, on no. the edge of your seat when no. everybody's a goddamn liar looking to upend the other person. That's what I'm saying. This movie is about paranoia I get and that. untrustfulness of humanity. I get that, and but I think it's a dog agree, shit idea. Because you don't like the idea does not make this movie I don't like the of. idea because it didn't affect me, because it had actually no stakes, because I was never at any stakes. moment nervous. There I did not stakes. care about any of these characters it's besides just, possibly all, Travis. All you're saying, basically all you're saying is you don't care about humanity. You don't care how depraved we are potentially able to Absolutely get. Absolutely true. So give me a movie that I want. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you just want to see people dying and killing each other, watch The Mummy again. Christ, man. This movie, it's okay. it's, it's the idea of you, you could watch it from two different perspectives and you would have gotten the exact same thing. Because at the end, when you see Will pull out his little, his little shooter, um, he, he's been hiding this gun the whole time. It's just like, oh, he's as untrustful of Will or of Paul as Paul was of Will. So it's just basically saying like, this is just a vicious cycle that humanity has found itself in. Know, it just regardless, it's just regardless, one, it's just regardless of what character think you are, one step ahead those, who is the most mediocre chess because, player Ethan, in the world, Ethan, thinking those, if we leave, those we're FBI probably going agents? to think they're, they're probably going to think that we're going to come back, so they're probably going to try to kill us. So I have to have some way to protect myself so that we can leave. Those FBI agents that you were like, oh, they're probably totally just good FBI. Guys. 
FBI agents just started shooting at the car. Why would they just start shooting at the we car? We don't it's know. Showing, and that is a problem of the movie. desperation and just like how horrible. It's not showing desperation. We know dog, nothing dog. about these people. It, Maybe you know, they're just you know really they're to, shitty hunters you, who thought they were seeing a deer. It's like you didn't want, like people are so desperate. They're breaking into houses just looking for cans of food. So of course those hunters are trying to kill the two guys in a truck. One person steal, is possibly breaking into a house looking for cans of food. We see at no point anybody else in this movie breaking into a house trying to steal a can of food. All we have. On top of that, so you don't trust Will even even though he. No, 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 You don't Joe, trust Will even after Joe, he says. Please, Joe, even after he says Joe, this is my Joe, family, and he shows Joe, up with Joe, his Joe. family. No, wrong, absolutely wrong, not. Wrong, Jesus. wrong, 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 wrong. What'd you guys actually feel? I like this movie. Whoa, even really just eh? Yeah, really. It's like, uh, it was the, oh, it was good. That, that tone of voice that Ethan used, that's his real tone. Those were all of his real feelings. No, that's not ever true on That show. is true. Um, when Ethan, that's the whole reason we do this When Ethan pops up an octave. So that we can save face. When Ethan Be pops up an octave, <laughs> that's when he's lying. Before we, act, so did you hate the VV itch? Like, I, I, loved, I loved the VV itch. This so, is what like, you saying that. No, no. Uh, what? Well, as, as Jeff and I were coming up here, we were talking about It Comes at Night, and we were talking about how it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't like the horror and like the terror, like not, I guess that was another thing we were talking about is how this might not actually be a horror movie. We disagreed on that. I think it is. He doesn't, he doesn't yeah, think yeah. so. Well, okay. I, I, but, no, I, 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 I agree it's a horror. horror. We'll, it's it's, we'll come, it's we'll not come in the modern vein of horror films. Of, it's like, kind of what I was trying to you know, when people think like a horror film, they think of like Unfriended or like The Saw or Hostel right. series. That's the modern idea of horror now. And I was saying, I, you know, modern marketing makes it seem like movies will potentially be that when they say horror. And it's kind of what what screwed over the witch at the end of the day is that it was being like, oh, it's the scariest film of all time. And people don't, you know, appreciate slow burns anymore. They just want gore and yeah, a, was, a killer stabbing people. I was surprised when there was no monster and it comes at night. <laughs> I had never seen any marketing for this at all beyond a poster that I thought was for the movie It. So that was great. <laughs> like The Witch, actually. I went in, like, it's so rare that I get to go into a movie blind, and so it was really nice. I also did for The Witch, and that was cool. But where it separated the two was, like, like The Witch is presenting something new. You've got, you know, all of their dialect and such, but it's ultimately about a family breaking themselves apart over their staunch religious beliefs, where Whereas this movie is a premise that is essentially like, in the apocalypse, do we trust anybody? Which we have seen eight Googleplex times. So it's not really presenting anything new, it's just in a slower fashion. And so in that sense, it was like, okay, so this movie is trying to say that people don't trust each other, that mankind can be pushed to the brink of depravity. I've seen this before, yeah, but and I know exactly where it's going the entire time, and then it goes there, and so it's just like, this took so fucking long to get there to say something that I've already seen in half-hour episodes of TV shows. Yeah, but when you're watching those movies, like, you have a character like Rick, who is trustworthy, and who you can count on, and you can, like, wholly root for, whereas you cannot wholly root for Joel Edgerton, because at the end of the movie, he is the villain of this movie. That's we the matter of the bad I guy. I disagree with you that, I mean, though, because is, I think that every Everything he, he does in this movie. A three -year -old. It's also horrible, another, like, and I he think that that's, a three -year -old. Like, that's the thesis cannot, of the movie. You cannot root for this guy. But you also understand exactly what he's thinking every step of the way, and you get it. I mean, no, you, I, I mean, I you get it, but you don't have to agree with it. And also, yes. it comes to the point where you know he tells his son when uh, the dog Stanley, Stanley mm -hmm. dies or is is sick, and he's going to put Stanley. To, he tells his son, he's like. You want me to be the bad guy? I'll be the bad guy. And that's what he's done mm -hmm. this entire mm -hmm. entire film is make the hard choices that no one else is willing to make because, you know, everyone else wants to have this shred of humanity of, oh, well, maybe we can save them. And he's the one who's like, nope, there's nothing we can do. Better just deal with it and move along and pretend it didn't exist. And that it makes him the bad guy in people's eyes because no one wants to make those hard decisions. I think, I think you should make the concession that they did a good job of having you empathize with the bad guy. Oh, absolutely. Of the movie. Yeah, all of the characters are very good in this movie. You understand all of their motivations, all of their inner thoughts and whatnot. And like, I, I thought the movie was very well put together. Um, I just ultimately don't really care for the content that much. Um, I, that's my only gripe with it. It was really good. Yeah. Absolutely, if this sounds appealing to you, if the story sounds appealing, <laughs> absolutely see it. It's wonderful. Um, I just, I was well, bored with yeah. it. Well, like what Jeff and I were talking about, this is a, a departure from like 
a focus on story and it's more of a focus on like atmosphere and like visually how they shot it and how it like the mood it's setting. Sure. Um, which I appreciate in, in film mm -hmm. itself. Um, did it's, you notice, it's nice to see a movie take its time. Did you notice the fucked up aspect ratio? No. Like, oh yeah, yeah, towards okay. the end, yes. Okay, yes. so was it just towards the end or that's, was it the entire point. time? I only noticed it on two shots. Okay. I, I thought that I was just seeing things. That's, that's that what that I thought too, time. but I was just like, but was uh, a ghost um, story, was that trailer on yours? No. It's the one with Rooney Mara. And oh yeah, it was, not, it was on mine. Yeah. Okay, so it has like the Polaroid, like yeah. the 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 four three ratio with the rounded corners, mm -hmm. and that's another A twenty four film. And I'm just wondering, like, are they just putting out these fucking weird formats to like fuck with us? Uh, uh, the because it, yes. it seemed it, it seemed like scope but thinner, mm -hmm. like slightly. Yeah, I could. Skinny. You know, I could see the the, the bars at the top mm -hmm. and the bottom, and I just for a moment thought, oh, I just took myself out of the movie or something. Like, I just ha wasn't noticing it before. Or I wonder if it's like 12 Angry Men, like Sidney Lumet, when he made that movie, um, every 15 minutes he would bring in the walls of the <laughs> set, like like five inches or something. Yeah. So by the end of the movie, it felt more claustrophobic. So I wonder if they, like, slowly <laughs> messed up the aspect ratio. Because I noticed it, and it, it was, it didn't drive me nuts, but I was just like, has it been there the whole time? <laughs> um, okay, but we digress. What would you guys rate this movie? <laughs> I would rate this, I would give this movie an eight out of 10, a little bit of thunder. I mean, like Ethan said, we have seen um, the content of it, but I thought this movie was one of the best ways you'll ever see it. Sure, um, I, I'll still, you're right. I'm still gonna give it a six and no thunder. It's just, it's still you're a story. Sour, but... It's a story I don't give a fuck about, but it, it's a really good movie. So yeah, on its merit alone, absolutely. I'm gonna give it eight lightning strikes, a little, little bit of thunder. The thunder for me has been I really haven't stopped thinking about those, like, uh, the nightmare sequences uh, we didn't even that talk about uh, Travis, Travis would have. Yeah, we didn't yeah. actually even talk about Travis, which was oh, probably the, the most... Oh, the jump scares of the movie? Uh, no. no oh, yeah, the yeah, provider I, I of ye old jump about. scares? But no, I think Travis was probably the most... I don't know. He's uh, the audience. Yeah, no, yeah. He's uh, the, don't worry, he's guys. The moral uh, center. Joe is going to write an essay about Travis. Oh, uh, uh, Travis is the guy that's the audience saying, wait, is that okay? Or that's him. Well, and he, then he fucking he's, dies. He's got the innocence, and then he like his dog Spoilers. dies. So that's like a loss of innocence. I think there's a lot of symbolism happening in this movie. There's so many losses of innocence. <laughs> well, thank you very much for watching. You can go ahead and comment below, like, and subscribe. If you'd like us to do a movie in the future, go ahead and request it below. We'll go ahead and do it on a future episode. You can also write down a question for unpaid intern Jeff to read on that episode, and we'll go ahead and debate that question of your choice. All right. Thank you, and good night, guys. Thanks.